All right, beautiful people, I believe you had a great weekend. Welcome back to another exciting week and of course, the day to make it better. Of course, uh, that's the show best now. My name is KMJ. We've got exclusives for you here on the show. Stay with me. Emmy Awards nominees, not announcement 2018 is just about happening. Check it out. the trailblazers they are exceptional and inspirational they are the exclusive men of the year join us on thursday the 26th of july 2018 for the official launch and the unveiling of the nominees carbon av and exclusive men's magazine organizers of the emmy africa awards have closed the nominations for 2018 edition emmy africa awards is aimed at celebrating exceptional and distinguished men in africa who have excelled in their fields of endeavor. Now, the nominees announcement program will be held on Thursday, 26th of July, 2018 at the Alliance Moto Showroom of Pebia Airport Residential Area. Now, the event starts at 7 p.m. and it will be aired live on Joy Prime, main partner of the EMI Awards. So, if you're a fan of the EMI Awards, this is the time for you to, you know, stay on Joy Prime and make sure you catch every single details of that. Now, away from that, I'm not having an affair with Nana Apia Mensa. Becca has uh, spoken on that very issue. Talented songstress Becca, who was on Daybreak Hits uh, yesterday's show uh, to promote uh, her new single, Nana was uh, questioned by the host Andy Dusty about the rumor that she is having an affair with her boss. Now, Becca debunked the rumor. She said she is not dating nor having any affair with the CEO of Xylophone Music. Nana Apia Menta. And you were having an affair with Nana Apia Mensa. Well, did you, did you I'm, hear a it? I'm a beautiful woman. No, did know? you hear it? I, I've, I've heard a lot of rumors. Were you having an affair with him? No, sir. But, you know, I'm not really bothered about that. I think he's a good looking man. Um, he's hardworking. He's determined. He's focused and he's looking at making um, things happen. Unfortunately for me, he's married, you know, so I don't wouldn't want to go there. You don't date married. No, I wouldn't want to go there. But Even if know. he's good looking and he has all the cash. Well, that, 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 that doesn't is... determine happiness. It's not about how much you have and He'll how good you He'll still make look. you happy. So that was an interview last Friday. Away from that, give to yourself blast the ex manager for spending her royalties for five good years. She's so pissed off. Ghanaian gospel artist Empress Gifty, formerly known as Gifty Osei, is out again blasting a colleague manager for squandering her royalties for five solid years. Now, the gospel musician, in a video posted to her social media page, failed to mention her manager's name but threatened to name and shame the person if he fails to pay her the money in a couple of days. Now, according to the outspoken artist, the said manager received her five years royalties without her approval, and that confuses her since that she is not one of the person's artist that he manages. Now, she quoted and says, you don't know how I produced the song. You didn't even produce the songs and you don't even know how I had money to record my songs, but you signed and took my royalties. Now, Gifty Osei, now known as Empress Gifty, went further to disclose that the person who had the guts to go for her royalties sabotages her when event organizers plan to book her. She also therefore cannot understand why the same person would secretly go for her money without her consent. So this is what she has to say on that. <laughs> What is now who managing me? Give yourself a car home. I got now who manage you, Omono. Who shall I do? No, me make a hobby. Now, what's nothing? What better me hard, hard hand money? Me bra papa. Me bra son of me, you be not be on my man, me, you are no worthy. No, Cobna, me. Cobna, me to me. That's nothing. That's nothing. I found on your nothing. So, won't swing at me. Nipana so won't swing at me. So, to me, got snow. At Simi Missica. No, with the Yami Bet Shiaoka. Wow, with Simi Sika, the idea. One Yami Wabet Shiaoka. Bra me bra. Please, whoever that took that money, I beg. Somebody's had a money, please. Take it to the person, it's not fine. 
let's talk about some foreign news. Wendy Williams of Big Zapper about her first battle with cocaine. And this is what we have to say about Wendy Williams. And yes, it's been a cocaine addiction. Wendy Williams has faced her demons and lived to talk about it. Now, the daytime talk show host sat down with E.T. to discuss her battle with cocaine addiction and how she somehow managed to put it behind her. It was during her days in radio that she developed the troubling habit. And she says, I was a functioning addict, though, she shared. I reported to work on time and I would walk in and all my co-workers, including my bosses, would know. But since I would have my headphones on and walk in the studio and they wouldn't even fire me because I was making ratings. Now, Williams also admitted during the interview that maintaining her wild lifestyle while also getting to work on time every day took work. A functioning addict has several alarm clocks that you organized, she said. It's a miracle I was able to stop. Now, Williams is using her experience with addiction in an effort to help others avoid making the same mistakes as she made in the past. Now, she has partnered with the Hunter Foundation to launch the Be Here national campaign designed to combat drug addiction and substance abuse in communities. So that's uh, the lady Wendy Williams, and I'm super happy about it. And uh, we wish you all the best. And we hope that if you're also battling any cocaine addiction, you might probably want to just, you know, um, yeah, stop right now. Let's talk about uh, let's talk about box office and see ten great movies in the '80s. Maybe you were not born very well. We have some for you to watch. Tomorrow, Scoop's a lot smarter than you think. I'm out there as the beast. Are you hungry tonight? Shut up! Take the pain! You don't sleep on no fucking ambush. Lieutenant! Why didn't you do something? What are you talking about? No, oh, you lie! I talk a dog, he's a bark! You didn't know what I'm talking about. No, I don't. You were born in 1986. If you were born in 1986, you know about Platoon, right? There you go. The number nine is Back to the Future in 1985. Back to the Future, a Robert Zemeckis film. Marty leads an ordinary life. No McFly ever amounted to anything in the history of Hill Valley. Well, history is going to change. And 1985 is not his year. But Dr. Brown is about to change all that. Are you telling me you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? He's sending Marty 30 years back in time. And at number eight, we have Once Upon a Time in America, which is 1984. Check it out. America. The story of friends. As boys, they made a pact to share their fortunes. Agreed. Their loves and their lives. You'll put up and you'll shut up. You hear nothing and you see nothing. Just like you did for Bugsy. And the very last one at number seven is Die Hard in 1988. A New York cop, John McLean, has come to see his wife. Instead, he's going to have to save her. Sit down. Within this skyscraper high above the city, 12 terrorists have declared war. They're about to be taught a lesson in the real use of power. There you go, fam. That's what it is on Box Office. We'll return at 11. IB is going to be on. I come back at 12 to bring you some more right here on the show. Many thanks to you for watching, of course, the production team, especially to you, Sly. And wherever you find yourself, keep doing good and stay beautiful. My name is KMJ, and I was born to talk just like that. Just like that.